So the fall equinox occurred about a month ago. So now each day our sun is disappearing earlier and earlier. The first frost hasn't come yet, but yesterday I took the tomatoes and peppers out of my backyard garden and covered this space with a thick layer of compost. In our lives and in our world, we are on a threshold of transition towards hibernation and darkness. As one of our new members, Nancy Withbro, reminded us last week, a threshold is a moment when we separate the grain from the husk. When we approach a new threshold in our lives, we have an opportunity to clear away and to move into fullness. So in the midst of changing seasons, I wonder with you all, what is the invitation of this coming darkness? Our scripture this morning comes from the book of Psalms, which in my own congregational upbringing was not often used as a main preaching text. Psalms are for praying or for singing or for memorizing in a moment of crisis. So in preaching on Psalm 139 today, I hope to invite a collective spirit of listening, a little bit of congregational Lectio Divina, divine hearing and reading, where the words of this ancient prayer can guide us through the crossing of a threshold into a new understanding. I'll be reading pieces of the psalm throughout this sermon, so I invite us to prayerfully hear their call. Listen with your hearts. O oh Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You search out my path and my lying down. You are acquainted with all of my ways. Even before a word is known on my tongue, behold, O Lord, you know it all together. Friends, God knows you. In biblical Hebrew, this word to know occurs several times in this passage and Throughout scripture, the knowing has a rich and vast array of meanings. In Genesis 4, Adam knew his wife and she conceived and bore a son. In Ezekiel, God tells people that they will know that I am the Lord. In Job, Job cries out, see, we have searched this out and it is true here and know it for yourself. Some form of this word occurs 60 times in the Psalter, emphasizing that the concept of knowledge is critical and meaningful in our relationship with God. And yet, particularly in seasons of darkness and worry, there is a deep and real fear about being known. I had a conversation with a dear friend recently how was, who was talking about how hard it is to build new relationships. She said that she got scared when relationships were starting to get deep because then the person would find out the real her. And in her mind, that real her, that self living under the surface of I'm fineness and success, was unlovable. It was a secret that needed to be protected. Her full story was never to be told because it would lead to rejection. I wanted to read my friend Psalm 139. I wanted to tell her God has searched you and knows you. God knew you in creation and thus loves you in the moments of your un lovable self that you proclaim. There is no end to this love. 
There is a portion of the psalm that is most well known and speaks to this depth of knowledge. Listen with me again. For you formed my inward parts. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. I praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. This portion of Psalm 139 is often used as a biblical condemnation of a woman's right to choose the best reproductive option for herself and for her family. The declaration of God knitting life in a woman's womb is used frequently to manipulate a narrative of reproduction which omits abortion as a sacred decision. The misinterpretation of this psalm has caused harm and invoked shame on an immeasurable number of women. But within the context of this prayer, the relational God portrayed has nothing to do with the science of embryos, but has everything to do with the fullness of being known. The author of Psalm 139 is not talking about cells being known. The author is talking about stories being known. Psalm 139 exposes a relationship with God who knows and loves her children so fully and fiercely that the entirety of their stories from beginning and end and every threshold in between is known and heard. I personally have never felt more known and heard and loved by God than when I entered the doors of a Planned Parenthood in Bleecker Street in New York City. On a fall morning in the middle of my seminary career, I was accompanied by two friends, my then partner and his friend, my cell phone carrying messages of love from my parents and from my pastor. That morning, I made the decision to receive an abortion and I was not alone. I was in the process of being known. But there is a moment at a health clinic when there is only one person who can pass through the threshold of the medical doors. So there I was, leaving my network of care behind and stepping forward with only the God who knew all of the parts by me by my side. Making the decision to receive an abortion was one of the hardest of my life. It was a moment of wintering, of grief. And yet, even in that moment of, alone of aloneness, there was never a moment where I felt God's presence leave my side. In the eyes of the other uh, women awaiting procedures on Bleecker Street, there were the comforting and suffering eyes of Jesus reflected back at me. In the shock and the phone calls and the insurance paperwork, there was the Holy Spirit providing good comrades who could hold my hand and dial the phone. In the grief and the wondering, there were words of prayer from my then pastor, Reverend Donna Scopper, who shared about her own reproductive loss to comfort my wounds. And most of all, there was this feeling of knowing, knowing that God's love could never disappear from my life despite any fear that I had. And so we hear the psalmist again, if I say, surely the darkness shall cover me and the light about me be night, even the darkness is not dark to you. The night is as bright as the day, for darkness is as light with you. To be known in our darkest hours is when the majesty of the divine is the most tangible. The psalmist tells us that with God, the darkness is as light. And in the spirit of divine listening and Lectio Divina, there is a bit of word play that can be done with those last lines. With God, the darkness is as light, or the darkness is not as heavy with God. 
The yoke of darkness, the pain is lighter and easier to carry with community and with God. And it is when we risk vulnerability with each other, when we can cross those thresholds of isolation with our hands intertwined in each other's hands and not alone, as we question what blessings, what gifts are coming for us during this season of continued pandemic and coming darkness, it is our call to know each other in raw, in honest, in scary ways, because that is truly the work of God. Because when we learn each other's stories, and when we risk our dark parts, that is when we allow the parts of us that we deem unlovable to be nourished by the love of God. And when we learn the stories around us of the people who are struggling, such as pregnant migrant workers who are fainting from exhaustion in the fields, and mothers in Southeast DC who only have three grocery stores across the river to feed their children. When we know these stories, we become accountable to those stories as well. Particularly in seasons of change such as this, we must trust that God knows us fully and that there is nothing that you or I can do to separate us from that love of God. In this transitional season of fall, the oak trees are also dropping their eggcorns. Some of these eggcorns will be devoured by squirrels, but some of them will be pushed underground into the darkness. It takes sometimes years of living in the depth of the sunless soil for an oak tree to emerge from an eggcorn. What if the egg corn refused darkness? What if the caterpillar refused its cocoon? To be known in the darkness is to be loved in the becoming. Our God is one who knows us fully in all of the seasons of our lives, so let us rejoice on this threshold of winter and let us listen to the psalmist again. How precious to me are your thoughts, O oh God. How vast is the sum of them. If I could count them, they are more than the sand. I awake and I am still with you. Ashe and amen. <laughs>